ശ്രീ ഗോകുലം സെൻട്രൽ സ്കൂൾ തുറവൂർ ചേർത്തല ഹായ് സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ഐ എം സിംല വെൽക്കം ടു സോഷ്യൽ സയൻസ് ക്ലാസ് റൂം ടുഡേ വി ആർ ഡിസ്കസിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ റൈസ് ഓഫ് നാഷണലിസം ഇൻ യൂറോപ്പ് that is the making of nationalism in europe the second part is the making of nationalism in europe in mid 18th century there was no nation state in europe most of the nations were divided into small kingdoms duchies and cantons are the rulers of that kingdom in that time we cannot see a collective identity and common culture that is they spoke different languages and belonged to different ethnic groups in that time most of the places were ruled by habsburg empire the tyrol austria and the sudetenland as well as bohemia where the aristocracy was predominantly german speaking it also included the italian speaking uh, provinces of lombardy and venetia magya was another language spoken by the people of hungary in galicia the aristocracy spoke polish the, these are the dominant group live within the boundaries of the empire students you don't worried about this uh, names and terms this is just the names of some kingdoms and languages exist in europe at that time but a mass of the persons people live bohemians and slovaks in north and slovenes crowds from the south romans from the east etc are the different group existing in that time in europe this is the mass of europe because we can see the uh, diversity in europe so not easy to promote a sense of political unity in europe in this we can see any one common feature in that time we can see only one common feature in europe that is the loyalty to the emperor that is the only common feature so then we discussed about how did nationalism and the idea of nation state emerged then we discussed about how the idea of nationalism and the idea of nation state emerged in europe for that firstly we discussed about aristocracy and the new middle class firstly we discussed about aristocracy aristocracy socially politically and economically the aristocracy was the dominant class in that time you can see europe uh, under aristocracy the, uh, one of the main feature that is the aristocracy uh, the dominant group aristocracy was the dominant group in europe at that time and another one is the members of this class were united by a common way of life that cut across the regional divisions the, uh, the members of this class were united by a common way of life the second feature is the common way of life the third feature is they spoke french for purposes of diplomacy and in high society the third feature is they spoke french
and the fourth feature is their families were often connected through marriages their families were often connected through marriages but that is the another feature the families were often connected through marriages these are the basic main features of the powerful aristocratic rule in europe but numerically the aristocratic group was very small the numerically their aristocratic rule uh, aristocratic group was very small in europe very small group that is the another feature small group small group and majority of the population was made up of the peasantry but the majority of the land was owned by the aristocratic group the land was owned by the aristocratic group that is the another features land ownership these are the features of the aristocracy in europe before the 18th and 19th century the powerful aristocratic people dominated in europe the social and political activities in europe under the control of this aristocratic group they had families and they owned vast tracts of land and they produced grains etc but the second half of the 18th and 19th 19th centuries we can see the industrialization of europe due to the industrialization there emerged a powerful middle class and an equally powerful working class therefore the social dominancy shifted from aristocracy to the middle class of europe this was the period of social transformation but uh, who is the uh, new class that is new middle class next we discussed about the middle class the new middle class try to implement two major ideas that is national unity and liberal nationalism the national unity and liberal nationalism the new middle class introduced a two major ideas that is first one is national unity and the second one is liberal nationalism national unity means the idea of one nation one culture and equality before law etc the next is liberal nationalism that is the major ideology in that time then we discussed about liberal nationalism the term liberalism derived from the latin word liber which means free the term liberalism derived from the latin word liber which means free which means free the new middle class stood for freedom for the individual and equality before law and they introduced some ideas first they introduced some political ideas some political ideas introduced by liberalist The first political idea is liberalists emphasized on the concept of government by consent of the people. The second one is end of autocracy and clerical privileges. Clerical privileges means religious privileges. 
and third one is the a constitutional and representative government through parliament was set up and they stressed the right to property and they stressed the right to property these are the major political ideas introduced by the liberalists and next is social ideas they introduce some social ideas that is first one is social equality among all the citizens of state was most important idea of liberalist and they wanted to the right to vote and get elected in the representative to the government and another one is the issue of extending political rights to women and non propertyed men that is the social ideas introduced by the liberalist and the then uh, next is the economic ideas liberalist demanded freedom of markets that is the first economic ideas introduced by liberalist and abolition of state imposed restrictions on the movement of goods and capital that is the another idea economic idea introduced by the liberalist next is it was a very difficult for traders uh, traders to trade in europe due to the small states and kingdoms because all these states have their own currency and their own weights, weights and measures so they argued for a unified economic territory for the sp smooth movement of goods and capital so they introduced in 1834 they introduced a, a new custom union that is solverin this is the custom union introduced by the liberalist at that time solverin is z o l l v e r e i n solverin is the name of custom union introduced by the liberalist prussia take the initiative to form this union this union abolished the tariff barriers and reduced the number of currencies only two currencies was allowed and the creation of railway further motivate the interest of national unification these are the ideas introduced by the liberal uh, liberalist in europe for the creation of national uh, national unity and the unification of uh, europe okay students then we are going to discussing about a new idea that is conservatism following the defeat of napoleon and the congress of vietnam the uh, in 1815 the europe gov the european government were driven by a spirit of conservatism then we discussed about some features of the conservative regime set up in europe following the defeat of napoleon in 1815 first one is the conservatives believed that establishment of the traditional institutions like monarchy social hierarchies property family church etc should be preserved they wanted to restart the conservative ideology that is the uh, uh, restart the uh, monarchy and social hierarchies etc 
The second one is a modern army, a dynamic economy, serfdom and efficient bureaucracy could strengthen the autocratic monarchies of Europe. The third one is conservatives were against freedom and liberty. They didn't criticize the legitimacy of autocratic governments. They imposed censorship laws, that is the control or checking the book and newspapers and plays, games, etc. The Bourbon dynasty, they, uh, another idea is the Bourbon dynasty was restored to power. This is the dynas dynasty was removed from the power during the French Revolution. Next is a series of states were set up in is a uh, series of states were set up on the boundaries of the French to prevent the French expansion in future. These are the main ideologies uh, presented by the conservatives in that time. All of these changes for the restoring the monarchies and create a new uh, conservative order in Europe. The liberal nationalist criticized the new conservative order. Then we discussed about next idea that is the revolutionaries. Next ideology is revolutionaries. After the years of 1815, a Secret societies spread up in many European states. The revolutionaries opposed the monarchical form of government and established after the uh, Congress of Vienna in 1815. The revolutionaries support the creation of nation state and the necessary to part a freedom struggle and it is necessary to the part of a freedom struggle. In that time, we can see a uh, most important revolutionary that is Giuseppe Massini. Giuseppe Massini, that is the important revolutionary. He was a revolutionary from Italy. He was a member of the secret society of the Carbonari. In 1831, he started a revolution in Linguria, but was captured and sent to exile. Two secret societies named Young Italy and Young Europe were founded by Massini. Two secret societies that is Young Italy. Young Europe, that is the secret societies established by Giuseppe Massini. These secret societies were also set up in Germany, France, Switzerland and Poland. Conservatives were afraid of Massini because of his democratic visions. He believed that God has intended nations to be the natural unit of mankind. Thus, Italy could not continue to maintain a small states and kingdoms. Italy had to be a unified republic which could be on the basis of Italian liberty. Conservatives described Massini as the most dangerous enemy of our social order. Conservatives described Mazzini as the most dangerous enemy of our social order. Okay students, today we are discussing about the making of nationalism in Europe. In that, chap in that topic, we mainly discussed about the aristocracy and the lifestyle of aristocracy in Europe at that time and next we discussed about the emergence of middle class, middle class industrialization and the 
emergence of middle class and they introduced two major ideas first one is national unity and the second one is liberal nationalism the liberal nationalism is the one of the most important ideology in that time that uh, introduced us uh, some ideas that is political ideas social ideas and economic ideas the sovereign is the most important term in that uh, next uh, we can we studied about conservatism in 1850s and the revolutionaries one of the important revolutionary that is the Giuseppe Massini and his ideologies and uh, workings etc okay students all of you study well this chapter i hope all of you understood this chapter thank you